Hi, so in video 1475 we talked about the different kinds of turbines and how they use the different qualities of water. So a reaction turbine uses the mass of the water and the flow of the water and there's going to be a lot of it going across the turbine to turn the turbine and then we talked about impulse turbines which use the pressure of the water. Now when it comes to storing water, and here we're thinking about the water accumulator as a possible battery of energy storage, we can use the same ideas. We can either store a mass of water, give it a head and let it flow over a wheel, or we can store the pressure of the water. Now this has a big impact on the amount of water that we can, we need to store and need to do the work that we want done and the so way we I've actually got to do a it. Turbine. It's a pelton, but it is a little, little, little bucket, so it'll function just fine. And just here I've got 20 millilitres of water, it's about 20 grams, it's not a huge amount of water. If I pour that onto the pelton, there you go, that's a bit embarrassing, there's not even enough mass in there to turn that wheel and that's not a surprise it's trying to turn a generator the PC fan and it just can't do it we'd need much more mass of water in order to turn that turbine with a greater flow however I've also got 20 millilitres of water in this syringe and this syringe goes through that needle to create me a jet of water and if I put that jet onto the pelton Not only can I turn it, I can turn it for a considerable amount of time. There's quite a few seconds of turning in that 20 millilitres of water. So here. What we've got again is our 20 millilitres of water in our syringe, and I've got a weight here, weighs about a kilo. I'm going to have to guide it a little bit, but we drop a weight on there, and there we go. We can actually get it to spin by putting Put weight on top. Now, that's a little inconvenient, but it is a way of adding a known way to create a head of pressure on a column of water. And that's pretty much what accumulators were for a very long time. They were just um, a tank of water with a point outlet, a weight on top, and you drop the weight onto the water, creating the head of pressure, force it through a nozzle, and you could turn a turbine with it. And for a very long time, that's exactly what accumulators were. So that's the idea of what an accumulator is, and it transitioned from that small syringe I showed you to basically giant brick and steel structures. This, however, is a modern accumulator, because we still use accumulators. Accumulators are used to even out water pressure in low pressure zones, when there's no town supply, if you're running from a well, or if you're just a distance from the water main. These things are essentially a steel tank with a cap on them, and inside that cap is a balloon. This is EDPM. You charge this originally. This particularly one, particular one actually gets charged to uh, 50.7 PSI. Pop your uh, thing into your tank, fill that balloon with water, and that balloon then exerts a pressure uh, against the air that's already in there, and we get an overall pressure of 145 PSI in there. Now, if you bear in mind that static head is uh, 1.42 psi per meter raised, we're looking at something as an equivalent static head of around about 100 meters or so. So that's pretty impressive. Now, you can get these up to figures like 800 psi. Now, 145 psi is roughly, I mean, extremely roughly, five times the current pressure that you get in your mains. What that means is it stores five times the energy. Now, this is about hmm, 15 litres or so. So you'd have to get something around about 150 to 200 litres from the mains to have the equivalent storage in here. And that represents a battery. So what we're looking at, if we put something like an accumulator together with a water motor, is a generation system with a water-based battery. Now that's still a considerable amount of water, and we're only talking about 145 PSI here, which is about 10 bar, something like that. So what we'd really want, of course, is something that can get some tremendous pressures like 800 PSI. Now you might think those are crazy pressures, 800 PSI, where are you going to get a vessel that will take that kind of pressure? Well, in fact, we're surrounded by them. So in this thing, it's a carbon dioxide cylinder. So this contains carbon dioxide under pressure. It's a thick, chunky piece of aluminium. We've taken these apart and sawed these open so we can see what they are. But these are in the scrap pile all of the time. And this, this one... It's crackers, it takes 169 bar, which is about 2,000 PSI. 
in a cylinder you could find in the scrapyard. These are very common. This one is, I think it's 27 bar, which is more or less 450, 500 PSI, something like that. I'm just looking on the thing to see what it actually takes. It's 26 litres and it is, yeah, 27 PSI. So this one will take, uh, sorry, 27 bar. So this one will take around about 500 PSI and it's got 27 litres in it. This one will take 2,000 PSI. Okay, I'm not for a minute suggesting that you attempt to get a pump that will reach 2,500 PSI. All I'm doing is pointing out that these pressure vessels exist all around. And of course, what we're trying to do is emulate the modern accumulator and that supplies pressure with compressed air to even out the water pressure in a poor supply. But if you're going to get to those kind of pressures, you've got to ask yourself the question, why not just use compressed air and forget about the water? Which would be a perfectly valid question to ask. What I'm pointing out is that if we can increase the pressure on the water contained in a vessel, then we can increase the amount of power within that vessel. Now, using compressed air is the modern way accumulators work, using weight on a piston with the way that the old accumulators used to work. But we're still doing the same thing. We have a reservoir of water to which we're supplying an external pressure to raise the pressure of the water so that increased pressure can result in more power at the nozzle. So water accumulators are not only used in water supply, they're used extensively in industry. Um, they're used in drilling rigs, they're used in the nuclear industry for delivering of cooling water. There's a whole range of situations in which water accumulators are used. But they essentially remain the same thing. They are a column of water with some external mechanism for applying pressure on that column and then it's delivered through a nozzle. Now, that application of external pressure is called charging. In domestic situation, it's normally gas charged, used air pressure. In lots of industry, the gas charging is done through nitrogen. But it's also a piston charging, and that piston charging can be done through uh, weights, which is predominantly what the 19th, 20th century accumulators were, or spring charging. So there's a whole way of charging accumulators. The amount of uh, water that's actually in the accumulator is related to the flow rate that you want and the pressure that you can get onto it. But the main important issue is it decouples the power of the water from the actual volume of the water, reducing the amount of water you have to have for the amount of pressure you can supply when you charge the accumulator. That means that accumulators then become a battery, an energy store. And coupled with the water motor, of course, they start to look like a replacement system. Now, they are still going to be larger than a battery system, but they do have their own advantages. For one thing, they're extraordinarily cheap. You can buy a water accumulator for a domestic situation at about £20. The pump to fill it is about £13, something like that. They last a very, very long time in the order of hundreds of years, so they have their advantages and they have their disadvantages. But the way of approaching them is, how are you going to supply that charging pressure that's needed on the column of water? The more pressure you can put on there, the less volume of water you're going to need. Anyway, I wanted to talk through what accumulators were and their possible uses. I hope it was of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.